Have you ever had a wish to remake your childhood? <laughs> well, that is exactly what Square Enix is doing for many of us. Many of the hardcore Final Fantasy fans will of course tell you that Final Fantasy 5 6, 9, or maybe even 10 is the best games in the franchise. But Final Fantasy 7 was the RPG that brought the masses to the series, and we can't deny that. The story style, gameplay, and characters were appealing to the mainstream audience in a way RPGs hadn't done before. The, the remake. remake. 3D graphics were pretty ugly when you look back to the PlayStation 1 generation. But the original game used a lot of tricks to make the game look incredible for its time. They built the world with pre-rendered backgrounds and CGI cutscenes, which made the game look better than what was possible with just in-game graphics. But as the graphics evolved, and the new games in the franchise didn't hit that sweet spot like the earlier games had done, the hunger for a remastered Final Fantasy VII started to grow in the community. But there was a problem here. The fans wanted a remastered version with only a graphical upgrade. So when Square Enix announced the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which meant that they would change a lot more than just the graphics, a lot of people were concerned that they would ruin the game. And hey, I understand them. The modern action RPG mechanics that is used in, for example, Final Fantasy XV is something that has split the fanbase of the franchise. You have the older generation, which is usually not a fan of the new games, and you have the younger generation that wouldn't even last a minute in the old ones. But here's the thing, Square Enix knows that, and when you take a deep look into the gameplay mechanics, the story and everything else they are upgrading, you can see they put a lot of care into making this game something for older and newer generation of gamers. The world. The world of Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting a big overhaul. The pre-rendered backgrounds is of course a thing of the past, and the world is getting a beautiful modern 3D environment. The fixed camera angle has been changed out with a fluid over the shoulder camera, which opens up a lot of room for the developers to fill up the spaces which we couldn't really explore in the original game. The remake will be split and released in several parts. The first part is set in the city of Midgar, a city built around the Shinra Electric Power Company. This is one of the most iconic locations in the Final Fantasy VII franchise, and will be expanded to be a full-sized game in the first part of the remake. Midgar was only around 10% of the original game, but it has been a central location for three additional games in a movie. So it's pretty logical that they would expand upon the rich history of the city. The question is, how many parts will they release of the remake? The combat, combat system. system. The biggest change to Final Fantasy VII Remake is the combat system, which is more like the action-based combat you find in Final Fantasy XV. But it's not straight up hack and slash, it's a hybrid between old and new mechanics. You attack, dodge and block in real time. But for spells, items and abilities, you enter something called tactical mode. In this mode, everything around you almost freezes to a full stop, so that you can take your time and plan out your next move. To enter a tactical mode will cost you a charge from the ATB gauge. This gauge fills up automatically during combat, but goes faster by dealing damage. Then you have Limit Breaks, which are some of the most powerful moves in the game. These requires a full charge from the Limit Gauge and fills up as you receive damage. When it's full, an option to select your Limit Break becomes available in the Command Menu in Tactical Mode. And of course we're gonna talk about the Summons which are godlike entities that can join you in battle. To cast one, you have to equip a summon materia, which will make a summon meter appear to your right. This meter will fill as you attack. Once full, you can unleash the gods on the battlefield. The summons will fight alongside you for a limited period of time. They will also have their own special attacks that you can execute using ATB charges. 
When their time is up, the summon will cast one last ultimate attack before disappearing. Which pretty much looks like the whole summon did back in the original game. The, the characters. characters. The main protagonist is Cloud Strife, a mercenary hired by a group of freedom fighters called Avalanche. His weapon of choice is the iconic Buster Sword, which is a huge piece of metal that most people probably would have problems wielding. Barrett Wallace is the leader of the Avalanche team, and a certified badass with a Gatling gun as his actual right arm. He's perfect for long range situations, and even though he might look super serious, he will actually make you laugh quite a bit while playing through the game. Next up is Aerith Gainsborough. Aerith is a flower seller who lives in the Sector 5 slums of Midgar. A white mage with good magic stats able to heal and support the team through a fight. The last playable character is Tifa Lockhart, a key member of Avalanche and is also Cloud's childhood friend. She's a close-range kickboxing goddess capable of delivering fast blows that can inflict devastating damage against her foes. In the most recent trailer, we got to see the beautiful work they have done on Red. And I know he's a fan favorite in the community, but I really don't think he will be a playable character in the first part of the remake. But let's hope that I'm wrong. There's also three non-playable characters of Avalanche, Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse. These guys had a pretty small role in the original game, but it looks like they are getting a bigger part in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. The Shinra Electric Power Company is full of characters we both love and hate. From Reno and Rude, which are members of the Shinra Investigation Unit known as the Turks, to the big boss himself, President Shinra. We will also get some new characters. One of them is Roche, which first appeared in a TGS trailer from 2019. This third-class soldier is also known as Speed Demon. He loves bikes, speed, and anyone who can give him a challenge. The main antagonist is Sephiroth a former legendary super soldier of the Shinra Corporation. Sephiroth has green cat-like eyes and wields a seven-foot long katana. His story is very interesting, but I won't go into any details in this video. For many of the old-school Final Fantasy fans out there, myself included, Final Fantasy VII is kind of like the holy grail of gaming. And the thing is that Square Enix knows that. But instead of giving us a straight up simple remastered version like we all asked for, Square Enix decided to dig a little deeper. And because of that, I have to admit that in the beginning, I was afraid that they would ruin the game, which they easily could have done. But it doesn't look like they have. The game looks pretty amazing. The visuals looks beautiful, and the gameplay mechanics looks really well made. So I can safely say that I am really looking forward to be playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake. The question is, are, are you? you?